Well, I'm rearranging junk in the shop today. So I ran into a parts snag on the 2940 John Deere. I got to order some parts. I don't know when they're going to be here. Anyway, I pulled it with a forklift all the way to the front of the shop. Uh, unfortunately, that means those two machines are going to be stuck here for the time being. And I'll explain more about the parts situation in the follow-up video on this tractor, but it's going to be a few days. So next we got to get this little beauty inside. We can't get the lawnmower out. Pressure's on. Gotta fix it before the grass grows too high. Ugh, you're the worst. All right. Get yourself and your dog out of the truck. Yeah, babe. You forgot the dog. <laughs> Thanks. Out of the truck, Pop. Sorry, customer. Howdy, folks. Welcome back. Got something here that might be kind of interesting. I think this is an E450, so it's a 1995 Ford E450, and I believe they call this a cutaway van. So it's an E-series cab, basically, and then the back part of it is chopped off, and it's a cab and chassis. This thing started its life as an ambulance, I believe somewhere on the East Coast, maybe Connecticut, something like that. Anyway, the guy who owns this truck, his brother has a company where they refurbish ambulances. So they took the ambulance body off, put it on a new chassis, and then they converted this one into a flatbed truck. It's only got 50,000 miles on it, or somewhere around 50,000 miles on it. It's got a 7.3 Power Stroke diesel engine, and it doesn't run. It hasn't run, he said, for about two and a half years. So we drug it over to my shop. We're going to see if we can get it to go. I don't know if I'm going to get the backstory correct or not. The guy who owns this, I think, is going to watch this video, so he'll probably... They'll probably be able to correct me, but as far as I understand it, it had some problems running where it seemed like it was missing one whole bank of cylinders, and he had it taken to a shop. The shop did something, installed some parts. It ran for a while, and then it more or less did the same thing. Took it back to the shop. They fixed it again. Then it kind of did the same thing again, and then it wouldn't run at all. Uh, he said all in all, it's had about 50 miles put on it since that shop fixed it. I don't know what they did. He said they installed some parts. I don't know if it was a valve cover gasket, you know, harness issue or an injector driver module or what we're going to find. Anyway, it hasn't run for two and a half years. He has installed one new battery and a crankshaft position sensor and still couldn't get the thing to run. So that's basically where we're at with it. So I don't know if there's anything mechanically wrong with the engine or if it's an electrical problem or what we're going to find. It does crank but it will not start. I've got the battery charger hooked up. I'll turn that up to 11 and we'll let those cook for a while and we'll see where we get with it. I'm kind of glad I wasn't there when somebody suggested putting the 7.3 Power Stroke diesel engine in one of these E-Series van chassis. That must have been quite the hold my beer moment on the, the engineering floor. Anyway, there's basically nothing you can get to by opening the hood except for the batteries and the air filter and stuff. Uh, almost everything's got to be done from inside by pulling the doghouse. So the first place you always want to start with one of these Huey engines is by checking the oil. And you can see it's, it's completely full, 
right to the top of the full mark, so no problems there. But you wouldn't believe how many of these things won't start because they're out of oil. Of course, with the Huey injection system, it uses oil to fire the injectors. So if they don't have oil in them, they will not run. So when it comes to diagnosing these power stroke diesel engines, checking the oil is about the only thing you can do without using some kind of a scan tool. It's a computer controlled engine and it takes a computer to fix a computer. That's just, that's just the way it is. So I went ahead and pulled the codes. Looks like what we would expect. So system voltage low and the keep alive memory is lost. So whatever codes it had stored, I'm sure are long gone. This P0113 for the intake air temperature sensor, that may give us a clue. So disregard the bottom two. The top one's the only one that matters. That must be a current code because the keep alive memory is gone. So all right, I'm going to crank the engine and we're going to watch the ICP pressure. That's the injection control pressure. So this is the oil pressure that the engine uses to fire the fuel injectors. If it does not build pressure on the ICP, it will not run. So you see we got good injection control pressure. That is not the problem. Oh, that was weird. We got a little spike there. Huh. But anyway, I think that's fine. That's not the issue. So intake air temperature is currently showing minus 40 degrees. Let's, uh, let's look into that. Well, there's your intake air temperature sensor, and it's unplugged. I don't think that'll keep it from running, but I don't know why it would be unplugged. Is that it right there? Looks like it's broken. <sighs> okay, so it works. It just was unplugged for some reason. Okay, I let the batteries charge for a little bit. Let's try this again. Something didn't seem right about that ICP pressure. Didn't it seem like it was way too high? It was going up to like, I don't know what's going on. Getting a bunch of noise in the signal. Hang on, let me move that VCI a little bit. Huh. That's bizarre. I wonder if it's got some kind of communication problems. Okay, that seems better. I've noticed on these older trucks the OBD2 port often gets corroded and you get a bad connection with your your VCI, the little transmitter for the scan tool. Let's try cranking that again. We'll watch the ICP pressure and the engine RPM. Okay, so let's see. Can we pause that? Uh, freeze. There we go. All right. Now, why is it auto ranging? I don't know. Yeah, 3300 psi on the IP ICP sensor. There's no way. It should be like 400, maybe 500. So something funky is going on here. I'm gonna unplug that VCI, spray some contact cleaner. We're gonna try this again. Okay, so here's another cranking event, but this time I unplugged the ICP sensor. So this must be a substituted value here, saying 2500. Because if I plug the sensor back in, it goes off the scale. But it still did not start. So I don't know which one of these problems we should go after first. So we got what, 170 RPM or so while cranking. That seems reasonable. IPR commanding 50% seems reasonable. But then look at the ICP pressure. It just goes crazy. 
Plus, I'm still getting all these weird spikes all the time. I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, we got way too high of ICP pressure. I tried unplugging the ICP sensor. It didn't make any difference. So I don't know what we've got going on here. It's like the, the IPR valve is stuck closed. But then it should still run, I think. It should still fire the injectors. It's got plenty of pressure. So I don't know what's going on. Just checking the fuel pressure real quick. Well, the fuel pump's working. Man, it says it's got half a tank of fuel, which it's a Ford, so take that with a grain of salt. But I'm still not getting anything out of the tailpipe. Got good fuel pressure, good crank position sensor. So we're going to try to run an injector buzz test real quick. And it's just going to buzz the, the solenoid on each injector. And we'll see if there's any audible differences or if it's not working at all. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. P1668. Injector driver module communication fault. That's not good. That is not good. All right, guys, let's review where we're at in our diagnosis here. It's gotten a little bit chaotic. So, step number one. Cranking the engine, we have a cranking RPM around 175. We're able to see that on this on the scan tool, so I'm saying the cam sensor is okay. Step two, we're checking the, the ICP, the injection control pressure. It spikes up to 4,500 psi while cranking, so that tells us two things: the ICP sensor is working, and we possibly have a bad IPR valve. Now it's been sitting for a long time, so there's a chance that might might self-correct but I don't know for sure. Step three, we did the injector buzz test. We were unable to communicate with the IDM. We got the P1668 code and we could not complete the injector buzz test. So I jumped on service information real quick and it kind of printed out weird, but basically that, that code says that the engine started, PCM detected an unexpected low or high condition on the electronic feedback circuit during a test period. So it didn't start, but it, it was triggered by the injector buzz test that we tried to do. And basically the PCM says, hey, I'm not seeing the feedback that I expect to see. Something's wrong. So I think that's where we're going to start is with the IDM, the injector driver module. And we'll check powers and grounds and kind of do the obvious things there first. So here's the power distribution box here. I pulled out the fuse that's supposed to power the injector driver module should be the same one that would normally power the fuel pump. And I'm hoping I have room to shove in this gizmo right here, which is a breakout for that relay. So I'm gonna plug that guy in there. This AC line is going to make it tricky. And then plug that guy in there. Now, I can't even see the test terminals, but we should be able to test them. Well, our fancy pants relay breakout deal isn't going to work because I can't even get to it because the freaking battery's in the way because this thing's a van and it's super jam packed in here. Anyway, there's your injector driver module back yonder. Here's the harness that runs to it, so I just pierced into it. Well, we should have a ground here. You guys can't see that, but we do. So that's good. Check our test light here. Should have power here, and we do. So that's good. Well, according to the pinout, this gray with the white wire here is the electronic feedback to the PCM. It's currently showing so it currently shows that we have basically nothing. 
on that one. So that's where we're at. I don't know. It's a pretty short harness. Just runs up and just down here to go to the PCM. I couldn't see there being a, you know, a chafed wire between here and there. All right, folks, I had to step away from this thing. It's actually the next day. I think when we left off, we were looking at the, trying to do the injector buzz test to see if the injectors are good and the injector driver module was good. And it kept basically failing to do the test and then giving us a P1668 code, which is it's not liking the feedback that it's getting from the injector driver module. So I set up a scope here. I am tapped into, oh, where's my paperwork? Hold on, folks. So well, here's the pinout for the injector driver module harness. I am tapped into, I believe channel one is on this brown with orange wire. That's your fuel delivery command signal. And channel two is hooked up to pin four, this gray with a white stripe wire. That is the feedback. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'll just use my scan tool to command the buzz test, and then we're gonna watch the scope. So you see we got something happening on channel one, but nothing on channel two. So I don't know what the communication protocol is. It's some kind of a serial, simple serial signal. So it's trying to talk to the IDM, but it's not getting anything back. So, yeah, I don't know. There's one other pin we can try to check, which is this signal return, gray with a red stripe wire. Why don't we uh, set up and see what that does? Okay, same test, but we're tapped into the gray with the red stripe. And we're not getting anything back on that one either. Okay, I think that's it. And it gave me the same code. So it's kind of weird on these older power strokes. You know, this is like the dawn of OBD2. So the, the diagnostics don't really work the way you would think they would. The, the injector driver module is basically its own, it's kind of its own ECM, but it's, you know, it's a module. It's kind of like its own ECM, but it's, it's very simple. There's only three, I think three wires, no, four wires that communicate between the, the PCM and the IDM. And all it does is say, it commands it to deliver fuel. It commands it which cylinder to deliver fuel to. And then it monitors feedback on a couple of different, different lines. And the injector driver module is really just an amplifier for all intents and purposes. All it does is take the signal from the PCM and, and amp it up to something that can drive the injectors. The injectors actually run on like 120 volts pulsed DC. So it's a, you know, it's a switch mode power supply and a, a transistor driver for the injectors. But I need to talk to the customer. I think he's already replaced the IDM once. So if that's the case, we don't want to just throw another IDM in it. Something is killing them. And we need to figure out what that is. I pulled the connector and ohmed out all the connections between the, the IDM and the, the injectors. They're all within the specs from the pinout test. They're all 2.9 ohms. Nothing is shorted to ground. So I don't know what's going on here. If he's got a bad harness under the valve cover. Or you know something is causing the IDM to fail. And you know that's going to get pretty costly. Even the, the cheap Reman IDMs are 250 bucks. So I need to talk to him and kind of circle back around. Well, something I noticed just snooping around here, this is the bulk connector here that connects the, basically connects the chassis harness to the engine harness. And anytime on these power strokes where you see red electrical tape, that's a high voltage lead. So that means that's your injector harness, basically. So this comes from the IDM to the engine harness and goes out to your your valve cover harnesses. Anyway, this orange wire right here, I don't know if you guys can see it. 
So this orange wire here is rubbed through. That's the conductors right there. And looking at the pinout, the orange wire is the fuel injector feed right. So that would be for the right bank of cylinders. So what happens is it, it the left bank and right bank each have a, a, a common power. So this would power the injectors for the right bank. And then each injector will have an individual wire that pulls to ground. So the IDM pulls each one to ground in order to turn the injector on. So let's see. This blue one looks like it's rubbed a little bit too. What's the blue wire? Light blue. Fuel injector number eight. Okay. Uh, pink with yellow, that's this one, that's the feed for the left bank. So I don't know, the only one I really see that's, well, the, the blue one's got a little nick in it, but this one's actually rubbed through. The thing is, there's nothing here. So the air box goes here, and then there's a, a rubber kind of snorkel that goes back to the turbocharger, but none of that stuff's connected to ground, so even if it's rubbed through, I can't see where it would really cause it to short. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, that's a problem. I don't know if it's the problem. Well, I say we roll the dice. This is a known good injector driver module out of my own truck. And they're all compatible. There's no programming involved. I think you can swap even the newest ones from 2003 all the way back to the earliest in 94. Anyway, worst case scenario, we'll have two broken power strokes instead of one. Alright guys, I think we're going to cut the video here. So 100% this truck needs an injector driver module. And I did speak to the owner. He told me that he believes the injector driver module was the item that was replaced by the shop the first time he had this problem. And then it ran for maybe 25 miles. It did the same thing. He took it back to that shop. They replaced it again. It ran another 25 miles and then wouldn't start at all. And that was uh, two and a half years ago. So. Something has caused this truck to eat three injector driver modules in about 50 miles, which is obviously not right. So I think what I'm going to recommend is that obviously we have to replace the injector driver module. So prices are all over the map for these injector driver modules. I found some used ones for 200 bucks. The parts store wants $450 for a reman. However, there's several places online that sell them in the 200, even $175 range for a reman, including Rock Auto. So probably we're going to go that route. You know, it's been sitting for two and a half years, so I don't imagine he's in a, a big hurry. So we're going to pull it outside, and we'll wait until we get our hands on a good IDM. And then I'm also going to recommend that we replace the valve cover gaskets, which are also the harness for the injectors and the glow plugs. And I'll show you on my truck what I'm talking about. So it's a lot easier to see on a pickup than it is in that van chassis. So here's the setup on my truck. And this truck's actually been converted to a newer style valve cover gasket. So originally it would have had two connectors, one back here and one in the front. That's what they used from 94 to 98. And then in 99 to 03 they switched to a single connector in the middle. But this truck has an updated gasket that's actually made by Dorman. And normally everything from Dorman with wires on it is, you know, an automatic fail. But these are actually pretty good. So what they did is they, they upgraded the design. So the international original international gaskets had basically an intermediate connector. The valve cover gasket had a connector that connected in from the outside and one that connected in from the inside and what would happen is the inside connection would come loose and 
a lot of times what would happen is the glow plug wires would or pins would melt and then it would melt the adjacent pins for the injectors or whatever and cause all kinds of problems. So the Dorman setup gets rid of that. They have an outside connector only and then the wiring on the inside, the harness on the inside is built right into the valve cover gasket so you don't have that additional connection which is a lot better deal. You see a lot of things online about the quarter trick or whatever where you can jam a quarter in there to keep the connector from, from unplugging. With the Dorman gasket you don't have to worry about that. Now the trick is, or the catch I guess, is that you have to replace this pigtail so you got to chop the original harness. Now we redid that in a recent video which I will link below uh, and then redo all the wiring which on a pickup that's no problem but on that van chassis that could be an all day job. So I still don't understand this 4500 PSI of ICP pressure while cranking. I mean that's way, way high, you know, it should be like 800 PSI or something. And it looked like we had a bad, maybe we had a bad IPR valve or a stuck IPR valve. But I'm actually thinking maybe that was a clue that we had a bad injector driver module. I wonder if maybe the PCM needs feedback from the injector driver module in order to actually command the IPR valve correctly. So maybe it was just kind of basically closing this thing as some kind of default strategy because it wasn't getting the feedback that it needed from the IDM. So maybe somebody in the comments who has more experience with that could tell me um, if that's a normal thing with the ICP pressure should climb like that you know when cranking if you crank long enough without the thing starting or if that's an indicator that we had a bad injector driver module. I really don't know. And then also if anybody has experience with these injector driver modules failing in this kind of you know pattern failure where we're losing we lost three of them in 50 miles tell me what to look for because it's probably going to sit here for a while if there's something obvious that I missed let me know. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll get back to the John Deere in the next video after I get some parts. And I don't know if there will be a part two on this truck or not. Hopefully there will be. And I was wrong. It actually only has 40,000 miles on it. So I just can't see there being a whole lot wrong with it other than that, you know, injector driver issue. So thanks for watching. Well, there's not much to look at, but there's three baby robins in there. Mom's out hunting right now. I just saw her. Leave him alone.